Good evening, my name is Parley Canelli. I'm an agent with Keller Williams Realty and I'm con conducting this seminar to help those of you that might be losing your home understand the process of a short sale and how that can affect your credit and compare that to a foreclosure. All right, the title of our seminar is A Homeowner's Guide to Short Sales. Okay. We're going to start off going over the different perspectives by the players that are involved, the bank, the homeowner, and the real estate agent, the foreclosure process, short sales, foreclosures, bank-owned properties or REOs, and then of course the bottom line, what it means to you on your taxes and also the debt uh, problems that you may be having. All right. First of all, what leads to a short sale? Dropping home prices can lead to defaults and foreclosures, and if it goes to foreclosure, that creates needs by the homeowners, the investors, and of course real estate, the financial institutions. The phases of the foreclosure process are the pre-foreclosure, which is when a short sale could take place, the public auction, which is known as the date of foreclosure, and then post-foreclosure, which is commonly known as real estate owned or a bank owned property. Okay. The timeline, day one, the homeowner misses their first payment. Day 16 is when late charges begin accruing and when the bank starts contacting you to get you to make good on your loan. Day 90, the lender sends a notice of default. That's the publicly recorded document at the courthouse that now puts everyone on notice that you're behind on your mortgage payments. It's at this time that other real estate agents loan modification companies and attorneys and your lender are going to be contacting you on a regular basis as they all have a couple of things in mind. Of course, there's the possibility that they can help you stay in your home and there's also, of course, the possibility that whoever's helping you is going to make some money either from you or from the institution that has the loan at the time. Okay. 90 days after the notice of default, there'll be the notice of intent to foreclose, also known as the notice of trustee sale. Which lets you know 21 days from then, the bank is going to sell your home at foreclosure auction. As soon as that happens, which will be approximately day 100 or day 201, it's going to be then considered an REO property. The bank buys the house from themselves, essentially is what happens. Okay. At that point, everybody calls those REOs, bank-owned properties. So you're really out of the picture at that time. The bank will evict you if you don't move out on your own. Okay. Why do properties go into foreclosure? You have subprime loans, you're unable to finance. If you purchase the home with a zero down, you have loss of income, unexpected events, or what we're seeing right now, the market has shifted. The overall market price of homes has come down due to a large combination of the other items on the list. Okay. The options to foreclosure. The bank is going to offer you forbearance. Forbearance allows you to take the amount of money that you're behind on your loan and put it towards the end of the loan, essentially converting you from a 30-year loan to a 31 or a 32-year loan. All they do is if you've missed 12 payments, they add 12 payments onto the back end. A mortgage modification. There are a couple of things that they consider a loan modification. The first one being, of course, to extend again the life of the loan. So you go from a 30-year loan to a 40 or a 50-year loan. The second step that they'll take is to reduce the interest rate on the loan so that you'll be now instead of a 7 or 8% loan, you could be down to a 5, 6, as low as 2% depending on the lending institution and how low they have to reduce the interest rate to make it so you can afford to stay in the home. The third and final thing that they're willing to modify and very unlikely, we've only seen a couple of cases that they've done this, is to reduce the principal amount of the loan. And again, those are extenuating circumstances that somehow the bank has figured that they will make more money by doing that than by short selling or foreclosing. And then if you currently have an FHA loan on your home, which there, that means you purchased it with an FHA loan, there is an FHA refinance that will allow you to do that. You don't have to qualify for it other than to prove you can still afford to make the new payments and that the value of the home has come down. Okay. Short sales. 
the, ne the second best option to one of the three loan modification options that I just showed you. Short sale can be a win-win. You have to qualify as a short sale candidate. You and your home both have to qualify. There are some other considerations between the bank and, of course, they're working with investors that actually really own the loan. And then we'll go over the eight steps of the short sale and then how it's going to affect you once the short sale is completed. Okay. A short sale can be a win-win for the agent, the homeowner, and the financial institution. If, it doesn't, if it's not a win-win, at least for the homeowner, then as the agent, we're not going to push that through at the bank because we don't work for the bank. We work for the homeowner. Okay. To qualify to perform a short sale, the market value of your home has to be less than what you owe. You must be financially insolvent. Basically, if you can't make your monthly payments on all your debt load, you're insolvent. That's the simplest ex explanation. You must demonstrate a hardship. What the bank considers a hardship is any situation change from the time that you re either purchased the home or refinanced it into the loan that you currently have to the point that you are now. If you lost your job, if you were a two-income family and now you're a single-income family, if you have increased medical expenses, if you have to relocate, such as your employment is causing you to move out of the area. Any of those items are considered a hardship. And of course, from our perspective as agents, the homeowner must be cooperative. Otherwise, the process will just be drawn out longer and potentially not, uh, not result in a closed transaction, just a lot of time spent. Okay. Other considerations that are again, worse than uh, the short sale is the bankruptcy, something we need to consider. A private mortgage insurance company could help us with the negotiation because they stand to lose a lot of money if the bank forecloses. And of course, we'll always be uh, monitoring the imminent foreclosure date because they will get, it will possibly get postponed by the bank, but we always need to be checking on that and so we'll be monitoring that for you to make sure that it doesn't catch us by surprise. Okay, the eight steps to a short sale. And the, these slides are in the packet that, that you have there in front of you. The, the steps are step one, we're gonna gather the information. There is a checklist in the center of the packet that follows, uh, it's a list of the items that we're gonna need. We're gonna open communication channels with the bank. We're gonna develop the proposal, basically, the convincing, convincing the bank that it's in their best interest. We're going to list the home. We're going to obtain offers on the home. We're going to submit the full proposal with the offer to the bank. We're going to start negotiations with the bank. And then, all going well, we're going to close the deal. You will have salvaged uh, some of your credit, and the bank will have gotten the most money that they can for the property. And then you'll be able to put this chapter behind you. So step one. The gathering of the information. If you look at the checklist in your book, you'll see that we need proof of income and assets, proof of your hardship, and a letter explaining the hardship, the property information, and of course, the tax records from the county on your property, any current loan documents that you have, and so on. The, this, of course, is a shortened list. What's in your packet is more complete, and those are all items that we'll need in order to uh, submit to the bank. All right. Once we have these items, one of which is a signed authorization from you letting us communicate with the bank, we'll submit that to the bank immediately so that when we receive offers, the bank will be able to process them as soon as they receive them and get them into their system. Okay. So we'll submit the short sale application. We'll find out from the bank if they have a special form that they need filled out for their packet. Some banks do, some don't. 